Yo, what up street gods, this is Eric Kim. So, question, what is the source of our power? So, some, some thoughts. So maybe one could say it's from our mitochondria. Certainly our power comes from the body. So it seems like the most practical way to study the source of our energy and our power is to study um, the human body, for the most part, the human body, at least our human body, is a closed ecosystem. I mean, closed and open. Open in the sense that I feel more power when I have engagement with the... Uh, how's it going, man? How's your dog? Chilling. Chilling? All right. Lots of good dog food. So it seems like, yeah, the, the, the most practical idea and solution is to... Think about the human body as a source of all energy, motivation, movement, and so forth. And I know I can speak for myself is that I get a lot more power when I'm actually out and about in the world, when I'm not stuck in my apartment. So typically getting more vitamin Ds, vitamin Es, whatever vitamins we get from the sun. So I have a certain philosophy of like fresh air. I think there's a lot of uh, philosophy behind fresh air in the sense that I don't think any philosopher has really, really done or scientist has done a fair job of studying uh, human physiology and the effects of the sun, sunlight, walking, movement, fresh air, micro particles in the air, micro climates in the air, micro humidities, whatever it may be. So anyways, so the source of our power, I mean, different theories, I mean, Nietzsche philosophized that it's the will to power, which means the will to have more resources, the will to have more stuff, whatever. And my personal philosophy is maybe the best thing is that like, we humans should kind of think of ourselves like trees. Like what does a tree want? A tree wants to get bigger. It wants more branches, deeper roots, more nutrition, more air, more sky, whatever it may be. And it wants, it wants more. And essentially, there's a desire to become bigger, get more resources, whatever. So maybe even for us individuals as humans, what do we really want is to become bigger. <laughs> like not bigger is like fatter, more, more muscle mass, improve nutrition, uh, Improved, improved inspiration and motivation. And so I know so, uh, in so far much as I understand for myself, actually the more muscle mass I've been putting on, the more I've been eating meat, um, the better I've been sleeping, the more I've been walking. Generally, the happier, the more powerful I'm becoming. And even artistically, I'm thriving too. So one might think, what is the point of life? And my very simple answer to that question is, the purpose of life is to become more, to get bigger, to get more muscles, to create more, to give more birth, to procreate more, whatever it may be. And we could even use like, and I think this is where the power of sexuality or whatever is kind of a good one because, um, like, so many ancient cultures have deified fertility. And especially in today's world where infertility seems to be the norm, it seems the best thing to do is think about fertility, like our artistic fertility, you know, fertility for both men and females. Um, and kind of for us to think about how we could augment our abilities to procreate art, to become stronger, to acquire more nutrition, and uh, so forth. So, some basic thoughts. First and foremost, it seems advantageous to, to walk as much in a human day as possible. So, you know, given the weather, given the conditions, whatever it may be, ponds some good clothes, 
to walk as much as humanly possible in a 24 hour period. And also, like something that I've been experimenting with is to extend my fasting as long as I can, but then when I break my fast, I just eat a shitload of uh, food and meat. So that means, you know, I treat myself like every day is Ramadan, kind of a bit, but then, you know, I cheat because I drink water and coffee and stuff like that. But essentially my personal philosophy is, I'm just kind of testing myself. How much can I walk in a given day? How much can I see in a given day? How much can I experience in a day? How much can I create and write? And see in a day. And I have yet hit the limit. And that's what's something that's so exciting for me is that now living in COVID times, there's so fewer distractions, which allows me to pursue my own artistic, oh, my own artistic and my own philosophical and oh God, got spooked there for a second. All right, so, so anyways, um, certainly there's no downside to getting extra sunlight, especially in today's day and age where we're all stuck indoors all the day, all the time. So to get ac actually as much sunlight as humanly possible and to spend as much little time in indoors as possible. And even my thought too is now, you know, for every hour I spend in front of a, a monitor or a screen, I'm gonna try to also spend an equivalent hour out in the sun in uh, the real world. And actually in an optimal solution, we should be spending 90% of our time outdoors and only 20% of our time or 10% of our time indoors. So what are the upsides of spending more time outdoors? So first and foremost, improved mood. You can see more stuff, you can experience more stuff, and you actually feel kind of more alive. You feel more childlike, you can see more stuff. And for me, you know, I'm a photographer, right? So I assume you're a photographer too. The only way to make more photos or make better photos is just spend more time outdoors, right? Like, I mean, Certainly you could shoot selfies of yourself indoors all day and you could shoot stuff in your house and that's fun and all, but the big problem about spending too much time indoors is closed ecosystem, which means you cannot see as much, experience as much. And I don't know, I think us as photographers, we delight, enjoy in seeing and experiencing new things and to just see and experience the same old things Every single day, it's a bit boring for us. So having some sort of randomness and chance and chaos in our lives seems to be typically a good thing. Now, for myself, what are my goals? My goal is to use my human body, my intellect, my soul, my being, whatever, to experience as much, create as much, to think as much as humanly possible. And I know it's kind of a lofty goal, but kind of like what Michelangelo said is, it's better to shoot insanely, insanely high and fail than to set the mark too low and hit it. And so this is what gives me a reason to keep living is that I'm continually experimenting, I'm continually learning, and I'm also continually excited to, to see more, witness more, create more, and think more. And even living within a small, relatively small city, which is Providence, I've still barely yet scratched the surface. Look at that lady there. So there's still so many artistic things that I have yet to create, discover, and try and experiment with. And that's kind of the fun and excitement that I personally get from life. That'd be a good picture. If I could shoot a picture, maybe that would be the ideal photo. So, 
what joy do we photographers, artists get in taking pictures or making photos or making pictures or whatever it may be? It's the joy of composing, the joy of experiencing, the joy of seeing, and the joy of uh, experimentation. Like I think actually as photographers, we're kind of like the ultimate visual artists in the sense that like, we're almost like visual scientists. This is actually my, my theory and philosophy because there's a freaking quadrillion complexities behind photography that we have yet to yeah, understand. Even human nature and also the human body and reality, the environment, fluid dynamics, whatever. And so there's so many interesting dynamics that we could study and experience and think about. And to just think about the basics is a bit boring, right? So us as photographers, we're constantly moving, we're constantly thing, seeing, we're constantly experimenting, and we're constantly thinking. And the more time we spend outdoors, typically uh, the better. Now, how is one to stay inspired and creative during uh, COVID-19? So, I don't know, this is my thought. They call it COVID-19 because it started in 2019. Yo, who knows if this is COVID-20 or COVID-21 or COVID-22. My thought is this might just be the new fact of life. What if life always stays this way? What if life never goes back to the way things used to be? What is we to do? So rather than to just get super duper depressed about it, I think it's just to adapt, is to be fatalistic, to accept our new reality. And given our new reality, maybe we could just think, okay, maybe I'll never travel again for the rest of my life. Am I okay with that? I mean, it's not even a matter if you're okay with it or not. It's more like what might potentially happen. And I like to take the stoic mentality where you kind of expect and anticipate the worst and you adjust your life based on that. So if I understand correctly, let's say life's never gonna get better then I'm just thinking to myself, okay, maybe I could just... enjoy what I can right now and not bemoan what I don't got and I could just uh, adjust to the present moment and, un and adjust to reality right now and you know, like, I said this in a previous video, but it's not even for me about quote-unquote adaptation. Well, to, what does it mean to adapt? To adapt means to, to f see what reality is and like fit yourself to the situation. Because part of it is you could actually have the will to recreate your own reality, like Steve Jobs and his quote-unquote reality distortion field. I think it's a good one. Even like Elon Musk, I mean, Everyone thought Elon was crazy and then he did the impossible because this is where Elon Musk is so smart and a genius because you know he studies physics and if you're kind of philosophically physics oriented minded even Peter Thiel right you know that there's really nothing holding you back except the laws of physics and anything in reality in life is possible I mean, not everything might be plausible or, you know, there are certain things which have a lower probability than others, like the chance of you creating a trillion dollar company. It's possible, but the probability is quite low. But I, I don't know, my thought is, if you care about it enough and you want to pursue it enough, I mean, certainly you could achieve it if you want to, but you know, it's all up to you, right? So now, you know, my whole attitude behind life and COVID and stuff is this, is that I'm just treating this all like a big video game. Like it's almost like approaching this philosophy that life is just a game, is that there's no ultimate purpose to none of it. It's more of like, how can we experiment? How can we have fun with it? How can we keep exploring? And how can we keep living in such a way that, you know, we're not so concerned about 
the way things are gonna turn out. It's just, you know, we just kinda enjoy the ride. So maybe also that's like another philosophy to life is that maybe we should just kind of enjoy the ride is that life has some ups and downs and it's like a kind of like a roller coaster sometimes. But you know, the roller coaster analogy is not always that good because that just presupposes that there are certain rails that we must follow. But no, I believe a little bit more that we are the masters of our universe and our destinies, which means you could bend will and reality to whatever you want it. I mean, just given physics principles, right? And now it's really the time for us to become the ultimate philosophers in so far much as just really asking yourself, what do I really, really want out of existence? What am I willing to sacrifice for it? How hard am I willing to work towards it? And just realizing that all aims in life are just kind of subjective. Realizing just do what you want to do. To know that there's no ultimate right or wrong. Yeah, to be hopeful, to be joyful, to enjoy this fun game of life. So the question is, realize in this game of life, you're the hero and you steer your ship and life however the way you want.